So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and dye the banjo. We're gonna do this in a rainbow color scheme. So I've got my dyes laid out over here. I've got several different shades of different colors, yellow, orange, red, turquoise, royal, and green. Technically, you could get the full rainbow colors with just yellow, red, and a blue. But I like to add a little bit of shading between colors, so. Over here, I have brown and black. That's for the banjo part itself. Here's the folded banjo. There's the head, this little part right here. The neck and then the body. We're gonna outline this in black. I use this little tiny bottle to do that. Let's go ahead and bring the camera down. Okay. So you just wanna run a, a really light line along that string that you tied off from top to bottom, okay? Just barely touching the tip to the fabric so that the dye will come right out and hit it for you. Turn it over, do the same thing on the other side. Slightly touching it to the fabric. Come all the way across. Real thin line there. From there, we'll go ahead and do the headstock. Again, that taller part right there is the headstock, so you know where to put the dye. That's going to be brown. And I always dye right up to right about where the marker line is. Don't go all the way to the edge. That way it doesn't come down into the shirt. Flip it over, do the other side. Again, just touching the tip to the fabric so that the dye disperses. Again, there's the neck. We're gonna go black on that. Tapping, just kinda other side. Okay, let me put a little bit up in here. All right, so that's the, the outline of the banjo. Now we'll dye the rest of it. All of this part, we'll do that in a rainbow color scheme. We'll put it in a bin. So I put it in a bin right here. This is a shirt that I dyed earlier. This is blues and a yellow. You can see how it's dyed in stripes. That's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna start with yellow. I use these squeeze bottles when I do the rest of the shirt. I like these because they're pretty much always upright and this you can completely control where the dye goes by you know using this hose so we'll put that first line right across not too close i always leave a white section here because that dye is going to migrate so rather than have it migrate into the black forcing that color into areas you don't want it if you'll just back it off let it spread, let it do its thing, you're usually okay with that amount of separation. Next is orange. A line of red. You can let them sort of come together a little bit. Right on the edge. Sometimes overlap like the turquoise to the red. You get a purple there. This is royal. Just going straight across. And then green. 
green. With these squeeze bottles for this size of shirt, you don't have to squeeze real hard. You kind of want to get the dye flowing and then go across the shirt rather than have this right on the shirt and then squeeze. I okay, will go back to yellow. Orange. Red. Turquoise. Royal. And green. Sometimes when these bottles get low, and you've got them tilted, you end up sucking air. So if you'll look inside the bottle, there's a hose. You wanna see where that hose is relative to how much dye you have in here. So you don't have that issue. So if it starts spitting, there's no telling where that dye's gonna go. All right, we'll just flip it straight over. Same colors in the same place on the other side. Now when I get to the other side, I just, you know, hit all my yellows, my then hit all my orange, red, and so on. So I know that there's yellow line here, and there's one right here. Orange is next. It's right along there. Red stripe. Next is turquoise. Royal. And green. I'm going to put something under here to prop this part of the shirt up so that this black dye doesn't continue to migrate into the body of the banjo. I just use a quick plastic lid. I'll just put that up under there and now it's kind of tilting up so that dye migrates backwards instead. That's it on that. That We'll let that set at least 12 hours, and then we'll rinse it, wash it, dry it, and be good to go. Okay, so here's the banjo shirt that we dyed. Now we're going to go ahead and rinse it. it. I let it set overnight, which is about 12 hours, and now it's ready to be rinsed, washed, and dried. I put my water on really just a, a warm temperature, just fine. Use my scissors to cut the strings off. I want to be careful not to cut the fabric. Just the smallest little snip will create a hole in the shirt, and you definitely want to try and avoid that. So I always get up under there and pull the string up and cut. There's three strings on here. Pull those off. Start with the side. The rubber bands just slide right off. Some people cut them and throw them away. I don't. I reuse my rubber bands. I wash them. I put them in a netted bag and put them in the washing machine and run them through the wash cycle with my shirts. And I just reclaim them that way and reuse them over and over again until they break. Just rinse, rinse, rinse. Squeeze it out. And you just want to rinse until the water it's not completely clear, but to where you're comfortable putting it in the washing machine with some other stuff and it not bleeding over. See, that's looking pretty good there. That's pretty, pretty clear the water is. It's getting there. Pretty good. Okay. 
that's that. Let's bring that out. There it is in a nutshell. There it is. We're going to wash it now and dry it and see how she looks when it's all done. Okay, so we have now washed and dried the banjo that we folded and dyed. And here is the final product on that. Very nice. Not much white. Managed to stay out of the white area. Left that nice and white. The neck turned out good. The head looks good. The colors, nice blend. Very nice rainbow here. And it is also on the other side. There you have it. The tie-dye banjo.